from keeping those trucks. You know, as you said, I mean, it's well known that that there's going to be, especially um, when the intermodal gets going, that there's going to be trucks avoiding way stations, right? I mean, we all we all know that's going to happen, and the route they're probably going to take is Gardner Road <laughs> up, uh, you know, all the way up to 151st and and over, right? But but do you think by not making this a truck route that that's going to eliminate that, or do you think it's more about? I mean, we've talked about portable way stations. We've talked about enforcing some of that to try and deter it. Yeah, I think it will. I will. It will deter it. If you if you say trucks can't be here unless you have a, a an endpoint as a business for a need for trucks, or in the case of, I mean, look at the the label plant, um, ITW, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's tractor trailers that go in and out of there. Uh, and they don't need a truck route to transit between, you know, for, for the purpose of deliveries or shipments out of the, the factory. Well, as, as I've thought about this, to me, the, the argument in favor is that we're controlling where the trucks go. Mm -hmm. When a truck comes off of I-35 on the center, if there's no truck route, he can choose whatever he thinks is his shortest path from there. When we have the truck route, he's forced to stay on that truck route and then, you know, take whatever direction he needs to to the shortest route off of the truck route. If, if there's no truck route, he would not be able to exit on Gardner Road and go through town. That's my understanding of how he's the making route. a delivery in town. He's well, gonna, true. If he's but, making a delivery or a construction project, that's that's understandable. But my point is, when, if if he's coming in town and we don't have a truck route, it's up to him to just choose whatever he thinks is the shortest route to wherever he's going as opposed to the truck route he's staying on the truck route until he gets to that point where he can leave and make his shortest route from the truck route well i mean if if he thinks the shortest distance is gardner road or the other you know and, and he has a, a, a business reason for making a delivery or picking something up i i guess i don't i think he's going to choose the most expedient route to begin with. So I, what, what difference does it make? He's either going to come down 56 Highway <laughs> or Gardner Road. But there won't be this this uh, constant barrage of trucks carrying heavy gravel with no purposes inside the city limits to, uh, to you know, to, to use that road. I mean, some of these trucks, I'm guessing 60,000 pounds, is that fair fair estimate? I mean, they're in a car is three thousand pounds. Uh, I mean, that's like having twenty cars tagging along behind, you know, a car. I mean, or nineteen other cars. That's that's got to be doing some damage to the roads. Has anyone done anyone done any cost benefit analysis on that? I, I, and if you did, I guess the question, the answer would be, what is the benefit? I know, we don't even know the cost, but what is the benefit? <coughs> Our roads are dead designed with trucks in mind, and it's, it's done by equivalent axle loads. So the number of trucks you anticipate is converted to, you know, one truck would equal so many axles of a passenger vehicle, and that's how the road is designed. So they're all designed for it. It's just a matter of what's the anticipated truck traffic. We haven't done any specific truck count on center, but the data I was able to look at from our master plan, it looks like roughly 2% of traffic on center is trucks, which is a fairly low number. Um, 56 here would be probably, I think, look closer to about 6%. To, to Tim's point, with it, without the truck route, you don't have a way to regulate traffic, or you can't direct the traffic flow. And an example of that is, if we are going to add stoplight interchanges and things, and the trucks are aware of that, they'll be able to circumnavigate those interchanges more so without the truck route than they would be if we were to have a truck route in place. So if they want to avoid when it's the construction and the stoplights that are here, the intersection, they'd actually be able to either go in front of the library or go in front of there and take an intersection without with only signs and no lights. The same at 183rd, they could actually cut over till moonlight uh, off of one of the rural roads south of town if they want to come up that way and they go up moonlight until they get to the intersection there. So if we don't have the routes in place, then we can't direct them where to go. And if we're not going to enforce it, they can always go where we want. But it mm -hmm. comes to a point where we find it to be burdensome enough, then we, we task the, the, the police chief and his team to, to say, this is something we, we've lost focus of and get back to it. But 
if we if we don't have those tools in our tool belt, so to speak, then we can't come back and say you're doing it wrong because they wouldn't be doing it wrong because we've changed the rules on them. So then we can't direct the traffic if we don't have the rules in place when they still have a, a business rule that would allow them to come into town and, and make their deliveries and export their goods, so to speak. Now the thought going north out of town within the square that, that Chris talked about, I think there is some relevancy to that because of the business, business services, the, the highways that they feed into, um, where that traffic's actually directing, I think it's a safe assumption that a lot of times they are trying to to get around, so to speak, some of the way station stuff. So I, I, I'm not sure that that's not something that we should discuss for them. That's where our focus should be. But going south out of town and then coming through through 56, I think we have to leave that open or we're going to make it more burdensome in other parts of the city is what I would feel would happen to it. If we don't regulate it there, then it's going to be unregulated in other places. And who's going to stop the, the rock truck in front of the school construction to make sure that they're actually going to the school's construction? Then we come into policy enforcement that's more burdensome than it was actually the problem itself might have been. Well, I think whether there's a, there's a truck route or not, uh, enforcement is really going to, the level of enforcement is really going to dictate whether or not those trucks are actually going to use sure. those thoroughfares. If you, if you don't have a truck route, you better be ready to start pulling over trucks um, <laughs> in, a, in an enforcement scheme, uh, or else it's not going to make a difference. Word um, gets around quick in that, those circles. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes or no. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm curious if we can, can kind of segment this a little bit. Obviously, 56 is, uh, is, is beyond our control. Mm -hmm. uh, South Gardner Road, uh, as the majority of the people, are we, are we more interested in leaving in a truck route or, or, or looking to remove the... I personally think that we should lower the speed limits put in the school zones, maybe do a traffic, maybe do a truck count during this process and see whether or not any of these things are having an effect, whether the ratio of trucks that are traveling that route is I think we're too far away from that to be relevant because the dynamic of the truck traffic is going to change so much within the next three to four years. A study I now, it, I don't think those numbers will be relevant. The studies that we have on file won't be relevant to what we're going to see in 2016. Well, I agree. Because of that. So, I mean, I, we will need to study and study again, but what we would do now wouldn't be time well spent to what we actually have to plan for. Well, I was just well, going to say, I was just going to say, I, I, I think that it would be premature at this point before taking the speed limits down to to consider removing the truck route designation from South Center. That's what I'm saying. Now, if we see that truck traffic is going up in that area and that we're having some issues with, you know, uh, hazards that are being generated on that piece of uh, on that piece of road because of the fact that trucks are not are one not adhering to the speed limits and two, not uh, staying off the residential streets, especially 183rd. That's the one I'm concerned about more than anything else. And and using 183rd, which is supposed to be the employee interest in the middle, but they're using that because of a direct route for them to be able to get their loads over there, then that's, then that's when we have to start thinking about alternate, either enforcement or uh, stripping the designation. Okay. Is, is anybody, anybody besides uh, Larry wanting to look to remove the truck route designation on, on South Gardner Road at this time. Uh, okay. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Because right, I, I do want to move to the, the, the box on the top there. So the current ordinance making South Gardner Road, as well as I think North Gardner Road, right? Or North Center Street was amended in, on November 15, 2010. When, when did the intermodal construction start? Anybody remember? It was 2000, early 2011, it seems like. It was uh, uh, March 2011. Okay, so for decades, we never had a truck route. And then all of a sudden, the intermodal comes, and now, now we need trucks in residential areas. I mean, I guess, I guess the question is, what, who, who, which one of these residential you know, citizens are we serving? by instituting a truck route just three months after, or well, just three months prior to the intermodal. Campaign. My understanding is, was that Madison was a truck route? Yeah. Or, and again, this, this is yeah. before my time, and I'm going by what I've seen in, in previous documents, but it was, at this time it was changed from Madison to uh, 167th, and I think the, the fact that there's a quarry up there had something to do with feel, feeling like there needed to be a truck route. 
Right. Uh, Gardner Road's the only 